Okay, so you want some M50Xs, but you can't afford them, so you have to go on a budget. Well, that's where these come in. <laughs> Today we'll be looking at some budget over-ear studio headphones, Mano's AU-MH601 studio headphones. Just letting you know, Mano did send these out to me, but that's not going to affect my review in any way, shape, or form, as usual. This is not going to be an audiophile style review, it's going to be more like a gamer perspective and sort of everyday life. So what do you get with these? Well, you're going to get your headphones, a standard angled coiled cable, with two screw-on quarter inch adapters, and of course you get the manual. That's pretty much it. Taking a look at the cable first, it's quite nice, it's fairly thick, and the coil allows it to extend to fairly decently long lengths, enough to be sitting at a desk or listening to music on your phone. The jacks are standard 3.5mm, but you can always use the quarter inch adapters in case you ever need them. Now the headphones don't feel cheap and have this black, rubberized kind of finish. That's not being pleather with their brand name on it. The cushion underneath isn't the thickest in the world, but it's just enough and it'll do. The adjusters are thick plastic and have some clicking steps, so that's always nice to see. There are obvious indicators so you can tell which side is left and right on the headphones. Each ear cup has Mano's logo as well as a shiny ring to contrast the rest of the headphone. A nice detail. You can flip around these ear cups all the way to the other side in case you need that if you're a producer or DJ, so if you need that, it can do it. The swivel mechanism is spring-loaded, so when you pull it out, it will spring back into place. Now onto the ear pads, they're pretty soft and they are circular. Now I have big ears, but the softness of these ear pads actually made them comfortable on my head. You get a quarter inch input and a 3.5 millimeter input. This allows music mixing, sharing, daisy chaining, and this can be used for gaming, which I'll explain later. But when everything is done, you can just fold it up and put it away. If you want to be like an N50X user, you could fold it up in this manner, but I, I don't recommend it. So this is how they're going to look on my head. Not too big, surprisingly. This gap here isn't enormous, which is good. I don't like it when there's a giant gap. It looks kind of funny in your head. And uh, it's fairly comfortable. It is touching top of my ears, but that could be just be because my ears are pretty big. And like, you know, if you want to flip it out because you're a DJ or whatever. I don't know how y'all do it, I ain't no DJ. Now, despite the fact that these pads are touching my ears right now, um, I did try playing games with them for a long period of time and it didn't really bother me because these are pretty comfortable. Either way, if you want like bigger pads or nicer pads or thicker pads, these are easily replaceable as they just slip right off. Removable pads are always a plus as they will like wear out over time and you're gonna need to replace them. And they're just a standard circular pad and you can find a whole bunch of different types on Amazon. Okay, so when it comes to sound in terms of listening, it's not bad, they're actually pretty nice sounding. I know I said I wasn't gonna get too into the audio file aspects of it but I have to let you guys know of something they aren't exactly balanced there is a bit of more bass presence but not like too much of it which is kind of nice so there definitely is more accentuated mids due to this I can hear voices a lot clearer which makes them being used for um, in-game communications with people pretty good because I can hear my friends over the whole entire gunfire and battles and whatnot a side effect of the mids is you're also able to catch footstep sounds much faster as well as gunshot sounds now the soundstage isn't the biggest in the world it is a closed back headphone it's a rather intimate but there is some width to it so I will be able to perceive more distance from a horizontal kind of plane so it's less like you're in a bubble and more like you're in a hall so forward and backward distances I won't be able to be able to judge as well as horizontal distances but regardless the soundstage is still kind of intimate so I can tell when enemies are coming a lot sooner than if I use like um, a big soundstage headphone and I think that's a benefit if you're playing a competitive shooter game if you're playing a game where you want more immersion I, um, th these weren't gonna do that great for that because the sound stage is fairly small. But if you're a competitive gamer and you're communicating and stuff like that, these, these will do pretty good. Now let's talk about that gaming trick I told you about. So the consoles, especially the Switch, don't have the best in-game communications for multiplayer games. That's where this comes in. So what you're gonna need to do is take your headphone, plug in the included cable on that side. Now take another cable with a mic on it, plug that onto the other side. I would recommend the V-Motor Boom Pro microphone, but they're really hard to come by during this COVID period. Now the included cable should be plugged into your game system, whereas the cable with a mic will be plugged into, say, a phone or computer that's connected to Discord. And bada bing bada boom, you now have a better way of communicating with your friends in battle. In practice, this made communicating with friends in battle so much easier. A lot better than Nintendo's solution. Yeesh. I should note that due to the limitations of technology and power, when someone talks through Discord, the volume of your game will be noticeably lowered in that instance, but will come back up as people stop talking. This actually isn't that bad because on PC, for Discord, this is a feature known as attenuation, which lowers game volume when people talk. Another thing I should note is that the feature for music sharing also transfers to Discord. What this means is that when you're playing with friends on Discord, anytime Discord is recording your voice, it'll also record a bit of the sound 
sound that's in your game. So if your volume is super loud and you're in the middle of talking to your friend and shooting at the same time, chances are your friends are also gonna hear those shots. In my personal experience with my friends, the shots aren't that loud and it just sounds more like some background noise-ish kind of stuff when I'm talking on Discord. So this isn't exactly the best solution when it comes to using Discord for consoles, but it's a lot better than a lot of other ones out there, especially around this price of just around 40, 40 bucks. Here's the price, at least at the time I'm making this video anyway. There are definitely better solutions out there that I have seen, but they also cost twice the price and more. It all comes down to use case scenario. If this fits your lifestyle where you need to be mixing music, playing games and using one headphone for everything, and you find the idea of having two inputs being very useful and versatile, these could be the ones for you. Now you can also get another pair of headphones that are around the same price as this one, but chances are you're not gonna get the two input jacks. That's um, that's something that's kind of hard to find these days, even in more expensive headphones. It's um, something that's kind of niche that people don't really appreciate as much. Anyway, this has been Technical. Like, subscribe, hit that bell icon somewhere down there so keep notified when I'm posting new videos and stuff. Hope this has helped you at all and I'll see you next time.